I'm Chris Berman. Well, let's get straight to the action. In our first game this week, we had the Giants squeeze out a four-point victory. The Jets won this contest, but will stay at the fourth place in the AFC East. Terry Glenn stepped it up this week and gave his team some added firepower for the win. In a long-standing NFC rivalry, we had the Panthers win their fifth game of the season. Clinton Portis had over 50 yards receiving and helped his Redskins beat the Steelers. Up in historical New England, we had the Patriots get sent away with a seven-point loss. Bills, Seahawks. Bobby Ingram is set to receive the kick, and it's kind of a, a number, whoa, almost like a wide receiver makes that catch. Now has to reverse field, but he's got a wall in front of him, picks up a big block at the 40. He's got one man to beat. He could go all the way, 78 yards. What a play. The Seahawks go on to win this by the final score of 38 to 35. Up at Invesco Field at Mile High, we had the Broncos win by a nine-point margin. The Saints got 300-plus yards from their offense in their victory at the Georgia Dome. We had an interesting free agency pickup of note here. Trey's got the lowdown for us. Trey? Bryant is on the move. Perhaps not for all that he thought he'd get, but a good deal nonetheless. Four years, $3.9 million. Todd Collins will also have a new address for a while as he signs a four-year contract with the Giants. This week had some big injuries, and we'll get to all of them, but we're going to start right here. David Givens sticks out on this list as one of the more costly injuries. He's suffering from symptoms of a concussion, and he'll be out for the rest of the season. On to the serious news of the week. Brady Smith is done for the year as he'll watch the rest of the season from the sidelines. And they'll be scrambling now to find someone that can fill his shoes. So that'll do it for now. Chris, let's send it back to you. The 49ers won at home, but we'll take to the road next week to meet the Rams. Colts, Lions. Kevin Jones is just shy of the midfield stripe and takes the... Quick handoff with a spin. They're fooled. Nobody was deep on the left side. 10, the 5, touchdown. The Lions win this one by the final score of 20 to 17. The Bengals won this contest and will now move to first place in the AFC North. Jimmy Smith stepped it up this week and gave his team some added firepower for the win. In a long-standing AFC rivalry, we had the Chiefs win their 10th game of the season. Donald Duke and the driver pulled down 100-plus receiving yards and helped his Packers beat the Rams. And last but not least, we had the Titans come away victorious. So let's change things up a bit and turn to a guy that's had his eye on the college game, and that's our own Mel Kuyper, Jr. He joins us now. Mel, your work never ends, I know. Believe me, I know better than anybody else. But it's never too early to start thinking about next year's draft, is it? Never too early indeed. And now that, for the most part, the regular season in college football is behind us, we can really start looking back at the guys that have impressed me the most across college campuses this year. Osborne is a guy, for starters, that I think truly has very few negatives in his game right now. 6'1", 343, out of Rutgers. And of all the defensive tackles in the country, he might very well be the guy that has the biggest upside attached to him. He's proven to be a real disruptor at the college level. He shows great anticipation skills and above average strength and quickness. Nash is another guy whose play is making NFL scouts sit up and take notice. He's very active for a linebacker and possesses both the speed to stay with receivers and also the strength to be a factor in stopping the run. So that'll do it for now, but expect there to be plenty happening between now and April. So that'll just about do it. But before we go, I'm gonna toss out a few game balls to my prime time players. Each and every one of these men had a week to remember. That'll do it, sports fans. I'm Chris Berman, and thanks so much for joining us here in the Bristol studios. We'll see you next week right here on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.